Okay. Regular now. So here I have already written down the entire various subtopics which we have discussed in this structure of hadron section of our syllabus. Okay. So what are the various things we have discussed? Basically, I have today I am just summarizing. We started on discussing how to probe the structure of proton. So what happens when we go from lower energy to higher energy? Also, we have talked about what should the various probes be, right? Possibility of photon as a probe, neutron as a probe, charged particles as a probe. Now, what sort of charged particles should we use? The most basic will be structureless charged particles so that there is no more strong interaction effect in the projectile itself, right? So, we have discussed about this thing. Next, we have talked about the relativistic electron proton elastic scattering. So, we choose as a projectile the structureless electron, right? Now, after that, we are talking about elastic scattering. Now, in this section, we have what? Discussed about the scattering kinematics. You remember? how the scattering kinematics work, written down the four momentum and all that stuff. We have derived the various relations. Next, we have talked about the various cross sections, the evolution of the cross sections. So we started from Rutherford scattering, next mod scattering, next introduced form factors, right? Then we introduced two types of form factors, electric, magnetic, all that stuff and then we arrived at the Rosenberg formula. Okay, we have discussed these things. Next, I have also talked about various problems. Now, problems related to this cross sections, what should be the angle, momentum given, the energy of the electron. Okay, we have talked about these things. Next, we have talked about the nature of elastic scattering for at very high Q square. This we talked about in a separate section. And after that, we discussed taking into account the experimental data, how to, what was the experimental data from which we extracted the proton form factor? Can anyone tell me? Which experimental data was there? It was the electric or magnetic form factor data. Remember, GE, GM form factor, look into your copies. I have talked about it on several occasions, right? So from there we talked about the estimation of proton form factor, experimental data, okay? Next, moving onward, going to little bit higher energy, we talked about the, again, relativistic, electron proton, inelastic scale. Okay, now in this inelastic scattering, again we talked about the scattering kinematics, variables. What are the various variables which come into play? Very important variables, remember the inelasticity parameter, new variable, Jorkel scaling, what? Jorkel variable, not Jorkel scaling, variable, Jorkel variables, and other variables were there, right? Look into your copies. So, after that we derive the relation between them, what are the various relations, possibilities. Then we talked about some, we solved several problems in our class based on this. Right? Next, we talked about how the entire spectrum looks like at very low and very high Q square. That means, we want to understand the effect of inelastic scattering in the spectrum. So, in the spectrum we are seeing some structure. Now, out of that structure, which one corresponds to elastic, which one corresponds to inelastic. We discussed about these things. Okay, I am summarizing again. Okay, now moving forward, next we talked about high energy, deep inelastic scattering stuff, even more high energy, right? Then we talked about structure function, then Jorkin scaling and then the, these are experimentally observed, right? Calendros relation. 
we have talked about these things. After that, Feynman's interpretation of explaining the experimental data interrupts. So, his interpretation caused the birth of quark quantum model. Right? So, what are the various assumptions regarding transverse and longitudinal momentum? We talked about it. The assumptions, right? The various momentum fraction, mass fraction, charge fraction. We talked about these things. And the various features of the model. So, basically, structureless electron interacts elastic, elastically with various other structureless particles known as patterns inside the proton and this is the entire scenario which is happening and this is how we can explain the experimental data along with Jorgen scaling and Calibros relation which are expected also. Next we design the Calibros relation in this quark pattern model. How to derive this? Remember we started with the structure function, we write it down in terms of delta functions and then we introduce what? The parton distribution functions. And after that, we were able to derive the Kellogg's relation. Now, coming to parton distribution function, what can be the various forms of the parton distribution? How do they look like in, in graph? Very simple. So, parton distribution functions, single proton. It looks like a delta function, right? Only one. Now, if we are considering three valency quarks inside the proton, then it will be at 1 by 3. And then, if the three valency quarks, they interact among themselves, then we will see a distribution. Right? In this, ux del x proton upward distribution. And again, if there, so the, again, up till now we are still talking about valency quarks and interaction between them. What if we introduce the C quarks into the picture? That means the creation of so more or less valency quarks, but there are C quarks around. That means pairs of quark anti quark pairs are created and annihilated. Around. So these are the C quarks and this is the valency quark, U, UUD or whatever, proton and neutron, right? Now, till now we are considering only the valency quark. Now if the C quarks inter is introduced, then the same function becomes different at lower energy, at lower Q, right? We talked about these things. So this is overall summary of the various topics we have covered in our structure of proton class. Okay. So you can see this video and uh, also look into your copies and get an idea about what the various topics we have covered. So this is what we have systematically covered all the various parts. In some other year, sometimes I do some more advanced derivations. There are several important, what you can say, important uh, predictions of the quant quantum model. Now, one of them is the Calendros relation. There are others as well. In some other year, I derive those relations. This year, I am talking about the Calendros relation. I want you to highlight on this particular part. Okay, so don't think that this is just a weak model which can only, which is only good at deriving the Calendros relation only. No, it has got several other predictions as well. And most of them have been experimentally verified. Or if there is some problem with the derivation, we are able to figure out the exact relation, exact reason between the, for this deviation from the prediction. So this is there, out there. If you check any good book, you will find the various other predictions as well. Okay, any question? Wasim? Bolo Ritu? Fine.